Good, mo <clears throat> Good morning, my friends. Hey. Everything that could go wrong is going wrong. I'm going to give you a little bit of redneck rant. And I'm going to read two chapters from the book of Second Chronicles. And I'm going to take a wee break and come back and give you another chapter or two. I'm having a big problem breathing, y'all. A big problem. I can't do anything without getting out of breath. I mean, walking from here to the sink or from here to the bathroom just wears me out. And I need to walk. I need to be walking a whole lot more than that. This congestive heart failure is not fun. And it takes your breath away. I, I don't understand it. You know, the doctor explained it to me two times. And I still don't understand it. There's a valve in my heart that's not opening and closing right. Which I've known for years. Doctors back in Texas diagnosed that a year or two before I left Texas and I've been gone from Texas almost two years so it's been a while <clears throat> but at the time it was not serious they said eventually I'd need surgery to fix that valve that's not opening and closing right or I don't know if it's a valve it's like a flapper that flaps to open and flaps to close or something like that in my heart and anyway it's that thing is wore out now and it needs to be fixed and I don't trust doctors and I don't trust hospitals and my Medicare has not paid anything since I moved up here all the doctor visits all the lab work I've had done all the x-rays I've had done everything my medicine everything I have had to pay a hundred percent myself I can't afford to pay a hospital visit with heart surgery out of my pocket my pocket ain't that deep so I don't know what I'm gonna do y'all I've got faith in God I trust God he is my great physician he's healed me several times when doctors said I would not live I, you know will he do it again I don't know it's up to him my voice is weak and crackling sounds like an old man and I reckon maybe that's because I am an old man now I don't know I've been spending probably 10 or 15 minutes talking and singing and gargling and trying to get my voice to sound right and I haven't succeeded and I just now realized I don't have my earbuds in and I don't know which ones are charged up this one was on the charger all night so it should be all right it's a new one I don't know how to use it let me see if I can get it hooked up Alright, it says it's connected. I'm going to trust it. Usually I test it to make sure it's connected, but I've already given you four minutes, looks like. Yeah, four minutes of redneck rant, so I'm not going to start over. Yesterday, out of the blue, my realtor that I picked when I was still living in Texas to help me with the procurement of this house and she did an excellent job and I loved her help and she and I had become good friends when I got ready to sell it I called her and got the house listed with her and she's done a good job she showed it a lot and had several offers on it some I did not accept and some I did, but they, the, those two fell through last week or week before, so we're back to square one. <clears throat> anyway, she sent me several texts yesterday 
and she doesn't want to represent me anymore. So the listing with her is about to end prematurely and so I don't know what I'm going to do. There's there's a realtor here locally. She's not local. She's an hour away and she could not list my house with the MLS multiple listing service here because the company she works for is not a member of the MLS here and they didn't want to join the MLS here even though it would do them a lot of good because the MLS here is big. There's a lot of well-to-do buyers in this area. But anyway, there there's a realtor. The, the first realtor that showed my house after we listed it is from the big town just south of me where I do all my shopping because there ain't diddly in this town hardly. And she wanted to list my house and so I'll probably go with her. She wants to come by tomorrow, Monday, and take pictures and dimensions and everything for the listing. And I told her, okay. I told her, I said, I don't want to list it right now. I said, I need to take a break because of my congestive heart failure. I just need a break because they were wearing me out. I, I can't find a housekeeper. I can't find a yard man. I can't find any help. Nobody here wants to work. That means I got to do it all myself. Oh, and my realtor that had it listed, the, the one that was a friend, when I proposed it to her, you know, I said, I want to sell it fully furnished. The furniture in it, I bought all of it new when I bought the house, so it's less than two years old. It's very nice furniture. And I said, I don't want to deal with moving it. There are six or seven or eight storage companies here in town in this little tiny town. They got more storage businesses than any other kind of business, but they're all full. They have no vacancies. And so I don't want to deal with getting the furniture out of this house and selling it and, you know, without having a place to store it or to set it up. I want it sold with the house. <clears throat> and there were a lot of people that looked at the house that was interested in buying the house fully furnished. The furniture is nice. The appliances are not cheap. I've got the best washer and dryer, the best stove, the fridge is kind of mediocre. It's nice, it's just not the cheapest and it's not the most expensive I got what was available. And the dishwasher is the best, everything is nice. And yesterday, for some reason, my realtor decided she didn't want to sell it furnished. She wanted me to list it at a lower price without the furniture. And I said, okay, if you'll help me get rid of the furniture, because I can't do it. I cannot do it. And she said she would. And then she came back and said she just wants out. She doesn't want to represent me anymore. So I'm having to start over from scratch there. And I don't feel like having the lady come tomorrow. I told her I want a break. So uh, it's still on the market. I don't know when it's going to end. It, it was a six month listing and it's barely been a month. So I, I don't know what's going to happen there, y'all. I know what God's end plan is. I just don't know what happens between now and then to make his end plan begin. So, y'all pray for that. Pray for me. I need help. I really need help. All the rambling I've just given you, I could have read two or three chapters. 
Joel. Oh, and I got a problem. You know, I've got my old phone. My old phone is right here. It wasn't dead. The battery swole up, got double size, which popped the back off the phone. And it's a permanently sealed back. When the back comes off, that means it's time to get a new phone according to AT&T back in Texas and AT&T here in Kansas because I've had it happen before. I've always, since smartphones came out, I've always had Samsung Galaxy phones. I've had four or five of them and I've been happy with them. But after a year and a half or two years, their battery gets hot and expands to the point it pops the back off the phones and then they're no good and but I noticed this morning my old phone was still working and I oh, turned it on and was looking through it and when I bought this phone that I'm talking to you on now they were supposed to have transferred all everything all the data from my old phone to the new phone but they didn't it was a young guy. He was the only employee in the AT&T store. And I was there for four hours because he had to wait on all the customers that came in. <clears throat> and I just had to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. But finally he finished and said that he did successfully transfer all of that over. And it appeared that he had until I turned my old phone on and found out he hadn't. And I don't know if it's him or I don't know what happened, but I have a calendar on my old phone and the new phone has the same calendar, same app, but it didn't transfer all. I had all my friends' birthdays and anniversaries and things like that stored on that calendar and I like it because I like to tell my friends happy birthday on their birthday and some of them that lives overseas or far away I have a reminder for a couple of weeks in advance to remind me that their birthday's coming up so I'll have time to get a birthday card and mail it to them so they'll have it on their birthday and it, it that data did not transfer to my new phone. So I did it manually. Now that took a while, but I got it done. Uh, anyway, let me start reading here, y'all. Last night, I, I did some laundry yesterday. I've got a ton of laundry to do. I did some yesterday, and the last thing I did yesterday was the bed sheets. And y'all, I've got three sets of bed sheets. Back in Texas, after Hurricane Harvey, when I bought that RV and lived in the RV, I had one set of bed sheets. I would take them off the bed, wash them, dry them, put them back on the bed, and it worked. It's not a problem. Up here, I've got three sets somewhere. I took the set of sheets off the bed that had been on there a couple of weeks and washed them, but I couldn't find, I cannot, I still have not found the other two sets of sheets. I've done a lot of moving stuff around since I listed the house because I don't want stuff laying out in the open, you know, I want everything put up in a place. And I do not know where I put the sheets. I had the sheets folded and laying on top of my clothes dryer. Well, for prospective home buyers coming through the house, I didn't want them to see the sheets laying on top of the dryer. 
so I put them up somewhere and I, I don't know where and all of my pillowcases I haven't had a pillowcase on my pillow in two or three weeks because I don't know where I put them so anyway I, I didn't want to sleep on the naked bed last night and I didn't have the strength or energy to put the sheets back on the bed that I had washed yesterday evening. So I slept sitting right here at my table. And y'all, my back is extremely angry at me today. I slept good. I slept real good. I, I feel rested. I feel energetic. I just can't walk because of my back problems, my leg problems, and the congestive heart failure, but I feel good. But my back is screaming with pain. It is very angry that I sat here at the table all night sleeping. It needs to lay down and stretch out. And y'all, that bed I've got is a nice bed it's it's nice it was expensive and I lay down on it and man it's instant relief for my whole body but I didn't lay down on it last night because there's no sheets on it anyway let me let me stop my gabbing here and start reading I got computer work to do Kitty Callie's laying right here beside me on top of the computer. <laughs> She's funny. I love that cat. Let me start reading, y'all. Chapter 30 of Second Chronicles. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. I, I love the love that a lot of people in the Bible had for others. Did you just hear what I read to you? Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. How come we don't do stuff like that, friends? Do we not love people? Do we not have concern for people and their soul? and the eternity where their soul is going to spend? I didn't. I, I didn't give a flip about the condition of anybody's soul until I got saved. And then instantly, God put that concern in my heart. And I was paralyzed at that time remember from the waist down and I couldn't go anywhere I couldn't do anything people came to me bringing me meals and cleaning my house and doing everything doing my laundry doing everything for me that was back in Texas where people loved others and helped others and then as soon as I could walk enough to drive and move my legs enough to work the pedals on the car and I bought a new vehicle <clears throat> then I started serving the Lord and I've been serving the Lord ever since and God changed my heart from one that didn't care that didn't give a flip about anybody's soul to being very concerned for everybody's soul and I've told you a thousand times at least, like Jesus and like Paul, who in 
the Holy Word stated that it was their desire that all people be saved. Friends, that is my desire. I, I say a big amen to Jesus and Paul. And for any true Christian, it should be our desire that all souls be saved. And the Bible says, how can they if we don't teach them or preach to them? It's not going to happen by osmosis. We've got to get out and plant seeds. We can't germinate the seed. We can't cause the seed to grow. We can't water the seed. We can't harvest the seed, but we can plant it. And that's what we're commanded to do. The Holy Spirit will take care of the rest. It's the work of the Holy Spirit and a person that brings salvation to fruition. But we have to plant the seed. So we need to get off our duff and plant seeds. Chapter 30 of Second Chronicles, I'm going to start over and y'all pay attention not to me, don't look at me, look at your Bible and let the Holy Spirit tutor you and speak to you as we read God's Holy Word. There is power in this Word, y'all. There is power in God's Holy Word. Listen to the small, still voice of the Holy Spirit as you read God's Word. Harvest all the good stuff God wants to give you from the reading of His Word. Chapter 30, verse 1 of Second Chronicles. <clears throat> And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel, and his princes, and all the congregation in Jerusalem, to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time, because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not done it of a long time in such sort as it was written. So the post went with the letters from the king, the post, he's talking about the letters, the British, I know, and probably other parts of Europe, refers to mail as post. So the post went to the, with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, and according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. That's Jacob, in case you don't remember. God renamed Jacob Israel. We, all true Christians, are descendants of Abraham, 
Isaac and Jacob or Israel which is Jacob's God given name and he will return to you to, he will return to the remnant of you that are escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria we do something God commands and he's going to finish it but we've got to do what he commands first and be ye not like your fathers and like your brethren which trespass against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation as ye see. Now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord and enter into his sanctuary which he hath sanctified for ever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. Bam, y'all, are y'all listening? Is the ears of your heart listening? You need to tune your heart into God. Tune your heart into the Holy Spirit. And listen to his still small voice as we read. You you want the fierceness of his wrath turned away from you. I guarantee you, you want that. And the few words just before that it says, "And serve the Lord your God." We, my friends, must be obedient to God. We may not want to serve the Lord. I didn't want to serve the Lord up here. I didn't. I didn't want to come here. But I came. And serving Him here, I guarantee you, was ten times more scary than when I served the Lord in the prison ministry with rapists, with child molesters, with murderers. That was scary, but it was not as scary as what I've experienced here. We got to be obedient to God's call. Whatever it is, wherever it is. For if you turn against again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that led them captive. Are you hearing this? I want you to hear these words. I want your eyes to see these words. I want your heart to have these words penetrated into it so that it will change, so that you will produce fruits of righteousness. Verse 9 of chapter 30, 2 Chronicles, For if ye turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that lead them captive. Bam, y'all. So that they shall come again into this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if ye return unto him. And y'all, excuse my voice, it sounds like a little girl today and I don't know what's up with that. It, it doesn't sound serious, but it is very serious, no matter what it sounds like. Verse 10, so the post passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, even unto Zebulun, but they laughed them to scorn and mocked them. Nevertheless, divers of Asher and Manasseh and of Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. 
Also in Judah, the hand of God was to give them one heart to do the commandment of the king and of the princes by the word of the Lord. And by the word of the Lord is the only way we should do anything, my friend. Verse 13, And there assembled at Jerusalem much people to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month, a very great congregation. And they arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem, and all the altars for incense took they away and cast them in the brook Kidron. That's what we need to do in our lives, y'all. And I had all sorts of altars and false gods and junk, just pure junk, in my mind and in my heart and in my life before God saved me. We need to get rid of all of that. God is a jealous God. We must serve him faithfully and forget all that other nonsense that will lead you to hell for all eternity. Then they kill the Passover on the 14th day of the second month, and the priests and the Levites were ashamed and sanctified themselves and brought in the burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. And they stood in their place after their manner, according to the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled the blood which they received of the hand of the Levites. And that just made something pop into my old ball head and noggin, y'all. Speaking of the word hand, this morning when I was trying to get my voice working right, sounding right. I was talking and I was singing and just trying to exercise the, the muscles to get it working right, get the vocal cords tuned up. <coughs> and I sang, How Great Thou Art. That's one of my favorite songs, y'all. It gives a lot of of praise and glory to God, where praise and glory all should go. But y'all, the very first line, the very first sentence in that song, I never realized, like, I never realized it before, but the very first sentence in the song, How Great Thou Art, is not biblical. And I never noticed that until today. It's, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands hath made. That's not biblical, friends. The word hands here in verse 16 of Second Chronicles chapter 30 reminded me of my Revelation this morning. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands hath made. God's hands did not make anything except man. The earth and the heavens and everything in the earth and the heavens except man, was created by God's voice. He spoke everything into existence. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And everything else, go read the first chapter of Genesis. The only thing he made with his hands was Adam. And then later, Eve. Everything else he spoke 
into existence. All right, sorry, I got chasing that rabbit hole, but I'm right. Verse 17, for there were many in a congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore, the Levites had the charge of the killing of the Passovers for everyone that was not clean to sanctify them unto the Lord. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves, yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. That's a no-no. And before we eat the bread, the flesh and the blood of Jesus at communion, we need to sanctify ourselves. We do not come to that dinner table as filthy rags. But Hezekiah prayed for them saying, the good Lord pardon everyone that prepareth his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. And the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. And Hezekiah spake comfortably unto all the Levites that taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they did eat throughout the feast seven days offering peace offerings and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. And the whole assembly took counsel to keep other seven days and they kept other seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah king of Judah did give to the congregation a thousand bullocks and seven thousand sheep and the princes gave to the congregation a thousand bullocks and ten thousand sheep and a great number of priests sanctified themselves. And all the congregation of Judah with the priests and the Levites and all the congregation that came out of Israel and the strangers that came out of the land of Israel and that dwelt in Judah rejoiced. So there was great joy in Jerusalem for since the time of Solomon and uh, for, for since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there was not the like in Jerusalem. Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard, and their prayer came upon, came up to his holy dwelling place, even unto heaven. And that should be the goal of us every time we pray. All right, that's the end of chapter 30. I said I was going to do 30 and 31, but I'm going to end it because we're already at 35 minutes because of all my rambling, but my rambling came from the Holy Spirit, most of it part about my house and my listing on my house and everything that was from me the rest of it's from the holy spirit i'm going to end it here and i'll come back and do 31 and 32 separately without much redneck rambling love y'all friends